Hey, 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 what's up, world? It's your boy G Shrimp, everybody, favorite baby daddy, the voice of the street, man. And today we in. I can't We in New York with it, y'all. Now, uh, some of y'all might have seen this on the news, y'all. It's a Brooklyn preacher. Flashy motherfucker, y'all. They robbed him on Sunday. This man is so flashy. He was streaming his service live, and it's a Sunday. It's church day, right? Don't y'all know three armed men come up in there, made him get down in the poor pit, and robbed him. Him and his wife for a million dollars worth of jewelry. Now, if you see him, you he look like a fucking pimp. He all flashy and shit. Got a Rolls Royce. He riding around stunning. He stunning so hard, you know, got the attention of criminals. And they came to rob you on a Sunday. Y'all know why that is? Because they say he robbing motherfuckers every Sunday. Why shouldn't we rob him? If you able to have a million dollars worth of jury... You fucking the hell out your congregation. I wonder how many people in his church have he ever paid their phone bill, light bill, or anything for. You know, you riding around and you and your wife ripping the benefits. I tell y'all, these preachers, they, they be like, like pimps. Trust me, they talk all that shit to building fund, what this for, this and that, for God, this and that. Hey, I tell you what. Take all the offering and toss it up in the fucking air. And whatever God want, he'll keep it. And what hit the ground, give it back to the audience. I bet you God wouldn't touch a dollar. But he riding around in Rolls Royce flashy and shit. He didn't draw so much attention to himself that they came to rob you on a Sunday, man. That's crazy. And then the police said he wasn't a stranger to them. They knew him. He had just been involved in a million dollar, what they say, scamming operation he did five years for. And he, that means he didn't went to jail anyway. So technically he's a criminal any damn way. All he did is start learning how to get a new hustle. And that was in the church, y'all. That's all it is. It's a new hustle. He come there, talk that shit. Yeah, it's Sunday and woo-woo and shh. Collect the money he go. Y'all wouldn't believe how many, how much money these church people be making, man. They had a whole episode in L.A. about all the rich lifestyles of the preachers. They be having rolls for his phantoms, Cadillac truck, big houses, this and that, and they keeping all this money. All they do is pay a few bills at the church, and that's it. Don't nobody ask them to get the money back. They ain't really even paying taxes. The separation of church and state, y'all. So that's why they're able to keep so much of their money. You know. I don't feel sorry for him, you know. And everybody say, oh, he didn't let off a shot. Yeah, because his ass got down. You can tell he been through it before. He said when he seen them walk in the church, they had masks and guns out. He like, oh, oh, everybody get down. Everybody get down. And they came straight to the pulpit. Then didn't, didn't touch nobody in the audience. Just him and his wife took that shit and left. And then look, these weren't no broke niggas, y'all. They escaped in a white Benz. <laughs> they mistake. They escaped in a white Benz. They say. And he go run out to church like he say and go follow him and say yeah, cause you probably grabbed that pistol, nigga. Don't act like you just went to see. I ain't never know no motherfucker to chase no stick up man unless he got that foul on him and finna get on him, y'all. Finna get on him. You know, y'all wanna see that? Just put, type in Brooklyn Pastor Gets Robbed and it'll come up. It's on every network. You know, I'm like, wow. Boy, this is crazy. So, as y'all can see, I'm back at the studio, right? I'm back at my house. You know, I got my own apartment, so I'll be here. I'll be at my girl house, you know, back and forth, moving around. So, uh, the other night, not the night of the party, probably a couple of nights before, I went somewhere with one of my partners, and we ended up, like, in the backyard party. 
This is how, you know, when the channel getting a bit, bit bigger, y'all. So the chick approached me. She like, hey, how you doing? I'm like, I'm all right. See, and you know, I guess I didn't show her enough attention or didn't recognize her. She, <laughs> you don't even remember me, do you? I said, no, nah, I don't. Really? Really, shrimp? You don't remember me? I'm like, no, I don't remember you. Used to fuck with my whole girlfriend. I said, well, if I fuck with your girlfriend, why should I remember you? Then she started tweaking. Motherfucker, this net niggas be killing me, talking that shit and acting like they all that. She just get to going into the thing, y'all, and ping. That's where I remember. I said, oh, yeah, you the bitch that was talking crazy at that party that night. I knew you remember. No, I don't remember you. For being a good person. I remember you for being a bitch. I didn't recognize this hoe until she started talking that shit. You remind me that same bitch was talking that shit that night. I said you fucked the whole party up. Y'all fucked the party up. No you did bitch. Cause you started that shit. And then you got your brother ass whooped. Your cousin ass whooped. We know whooped four motherfuckers in the party. So I'm like Joe that's, that's just right. We finna ride. Now here come the guns, y'all. Like we ain't got none. My man damn near called a body that night. He jumped out. He finna dome him. I'm like, man, don't kill this nigga, man. Let's go. Let's go. And we just end up getting up out of that. Because sometimes, you got to remember, we've been in this party damn near four hours. Everybody know us. They call us by name and shit. The nigga run up with his little strap. My man jumped out and he had the ups on him. And the nigga like... <laughs> I'm like, no, I'm going to pop him. This nigga ain't no gunslinger. Look at him. He finna run, make it. Come on, let's ride. We got him out of there. But I didn't recognize her when she was talking nice. It wasn't until she started talking like a bitch that I remembered her. I remember the tone in her voice. I remember how ignorant she got, how disrespectful she became. And she became that same person again just the other day. All because I didn't recognize her. Bitch, we weren't friends. I was fucking with your friend. I'm not into fucking with women and fucking with their friends. I never paid no attention to you because I never liked your ass no way because you always turned into that bitch. You just never got a chance to flash out on me. You know what I mean? But the time it did jump, that's what happened. And she really was trying to repeat the whole thing. All over again, y'all. That's what she wanted to do. See if they could win this time. They took an L the first altercation. So she wanted to start another one. To see if they can come up on the winning side. Bitch, you gonna get somebody hurt. For real. Because this ain't 20 years ago. This ain't 20 years ago. When I'm young and want to fight and all that. Bitch, I ain't got time to be scuffling with you. I might tell you, man, bust that bitch too, Joe. Bust him and her. And then y'all both be shot. All because you you shouldn't have said nothing to me. We weren't friends. We ain't really enemies. You could have just said hi and kept it moving. But when she started talking shit, she started saying little shit. Yeah, you think I'm going to be seeing you on your little YouTube channel and shit? You think you this and that? Just went to trying to bash me. And I'm like, I didn't even know you watched the YouTube channel. Oh, yeah, I watched that bullshit. <laughs> I said, oh, you watched that bullshit? Yeah, I watched that bullshit. I said, well, why are you watching it? Because I know you, nigga. I said, well, you still don't like me? No, I don't like you. I like you, but I don't like you. I said, oh, she let it slip out. How the fuck can that happen? No, I don't like you. I like you, but I don't like you. You like me, but you don't really want to like me. And sometimes people have problems with their feelings, y'all. See, the heart go take what the heart wants. You can look at a motherfucker and say, I don't like this motherfucker. And then for you in your heart, say, no, I like him. And then before you know it, you find yourself doing something nice for somebody you thought you didn't like. You didn't want to like him. But you ain't had no choice. How can you hate me, bitch? I'm the coolest motherfucker in the city, bitch. Coolest motherfucker in the city. How the fuck you don't like me?
Okay, if you are, I can understand that. But I got ops that still like me. How the fuck you mad at me? To her brother wasn't even mad, y'all. I seen Tim at the party too. We laughed and joked about it. And you know what he say? Man, I'm glad you stopped your boy for killing my man. He said because he, he had him. I'm like, yeah, I know. I didn't want it wasn't that serious. You know, we, we hadn't took no L's. We had won four fights. And then the nigga come with the gun. I could tell he was an amateur. My man, professional. He finna knock his motherfucking head off. I'm like, no, 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 no. See, all y'all see in Chicago is the time we say go. The green lights. That's all y'all see. Y'all don't see how many red lights we put up. You know, we when you be the general, you be having little soldiers begging you to bust a move. Gee, can I get out on? No. Can I get out on? No. Can I get out on? No. And then it's going to be a time you say, yeah, do what you got to do. I had one nigga call me, y'all. I think he was working with the police or something. Now tell me, how do this sound? I want y'all to leave this in the comment. He called me. What's up, G? I said, no, nah, what's happening? Man, dog, this pussy ass nigga owed me some money, man. He, man, I don't know, man. He ain't got it yet, man. I, you, you think I should kill him? I'm like, shit, I don't know. That's your problem, homie. I don't know how much money it is, what the situation is. I don't know. I ducked the question. A week later, he called back. This nigga still ain't paying me, man. Man, you think I should kill him, G? Can I kill him? I'm like, I don't know, dog. That's on you, man. You know, I don't, I'm not in that. I don't know what's going on. I ducked it again. Third time. Man, G, I'm getting tired of this nigga, man. Can, man, I'm telling you, G, I'm going to get... Man, can I kill him? I said, man, why the fuck do you keep calling me, asking me, should you kill a motherfucker about your money? You know how you feel about that shit. I said, is he a hustler? Yeah. I said, do you think if you give him some time, he'll pay it back? Probably. I said, so why the fuck you so much in the rest to kill him? I said, man, you make me think you trying to get me on tape, uh, sanction a hit. I don't do shit like you. You, you ain't going to get me on no phone sanctioning no motherfucking hit. If me and you face to face and I said, hey, I probably won't even say it. That nigga got to go. I probably won't even say it. This. That's it. And he really want me to verbally say it. And then, I don't even think the money, I can't even, I think it was like $5,000. Maybe less. It wasn't no hell of a lot because he wasn't that big. You know, and I'm like, damn, why are you trying to get me to say what to, you to do about your money? That's crazy. Let me tell you, some other shit happened to me. This is how stupid Motherfuckers be. I sold a nigga a motherfucking Cadillac truck. Not a Cadillac truck, a Cadillac, right? He gets popped by the feds or some police. They find $15,000 in the truck. They run my name. See, I sold it to him. They used the fact that I was a criminal. They said I was a drug dealer. He said the money was in the trunk. When he bought the car. Now this motherfucker. I'll never forget this y'all. Because I was in the work release. And I ain't even all the way out of jail yet. They subpoenaed me to court. And uh, they asking about this car. And I'm like. Uh, a Cadillac. Did you sell this Cadillac to such and such? such, such? Yeah. I sold it to him. Okay. What? What the fuck? Then you know they talking. And the motherfucker say, did you leave anything in the trunk? I'm like, no, I took all my belongings out the trunk. was nothing in the car. So do you know nothing about $10,000, $15,000 that was left in the trunk? I'm like, <laughs> I swear to God, I started laughing, y'all. I'm like, I know this is not your defense, man. I know this is not you. You really trying to make this my problem? Because you it's just money. But how you going to throw me under the bus? I'm talking about they subpoenaed me to court, y'all. You know, we don't take no stance and shit. Now, imagine me coming from the work lease center, get picked up. I'm thinking it's a new case. They take me in there, and bam, 
totally on the stand. And I'm looking like, what the fuck? What the fuck am I doing here? I'm a witness? I ain't signed, I ain't no motherfucking witness. I don't do that. They asked them, but you can't disrespect these people in this courtroom. They asking you questions, motherfucker. Man, you don't want to tell them, but you got the answer, especially when they simple shit like, did you use to own a white Cadillac? Or I think it was red. Yeah. Did you sell it? Yeah. They try to put like the money was mine, y'all. I'm like, ain't this a bitch? And uh, I'm like, man, for real. I said, let's say I sold this Cadillac for $6,000. You think if I sold you a car for $6,000, I'll leave fifteen in the goddamn trunk? How much sense do that make? Everybody in the courtroom started laughing, you know. I said, it's the dumbest shit I done heard, man. I know this ain't what you're going with. Yeah, it is. People try to wiggle their way out of jams, man. They throw their mama under the bus. He didn't have to put me in it. I didn't have nothing to do with his case. Nothing to do with his case. And let me tell you something about that court shit. That attempted court, y'all. You know, that is a timeless charge. You do not want to get hit with attempted court. I mean, you really don't. They, you can sit in the county three, four years under attempted court. I had a partner. They called him to the stand. Psst, I can't tell you nothing, homie. I don't know shit about shit. Woo woo. He stand ten toes down, right? Judge, I right, we signed you attempted court. Locked his ass up, right? The niggas who they wanted him to tell on went to jail, did three years, and come home. They catch a new case and end up in the county. And who they see? This nigga. They like, what's up, dog? Woo, woo, woo. He like, yeah. Man, what's up? What kind of case you got? Oh, man, I'm still in here on that temple. You still in here? He said, you didn't know we all uh, copped out? He said, no. Nah. He said, you been here all the time, dog? He like, yeah. He said, man, you could have been gone home, man. He said, man, you should have left the day we copped out. He like, I didn't know. He had to go talk to the goddamn uh, bailiff. The bailiff put him on the doctor to go see the judge the next day. The judge was surprised he was still in there. He like, you still been in here? He said, you didn't know those guys were convicted? He said, no, your honor. I had no contact with him. I've been locked up. The judge told the bailiff, he said, look, I want you to walk this guy through the process, get him clothes. I want him to have an immediate release. I want you to take him to the property room, get his clothes, everything where he belong, and walk him to the door. I want him to get out of this jail immediately. No process, none of that. And the baby was like, okay. Walk that motherfucker right up out of that. He had been in there probably like four years, y'all, on attempted court. And he didn't even know the case the niggas was fighting. They had copped out, took six pieces Went down, did the three years, and they back on some more shit when they see him. Sometimes being solid uh, uh, fuck you up sometimes, being too solid. Some people don't be thinking, you know, like, <laughs> we train these little boys, y'all, so rough, right? We train these little motherfuckers. Let me tell you about <laughs> to my little chick, Polly, you always fuck with, right? Her little son joined the mob. Him and some of his little guys got caught up on the case, right? So they juveniles. So I go down there to get them. I come down there to get them. They said, we looking for... I said, my girl, she want Marcus Houston. And one of the other little stones, I didn't even know he was there. He said, that's my auntie. And once she said his name, she like, yeah, that's my sister's son. She was able to pick up on it. The other guy, he tried to say... No, that's my mama. When he should have said auntie. But my girl like, no, my son is Marcus Houston. She ain't finna take no other nigga talking about her son because she want to get the right child out. Man, this boy was so solid, he did not talk to the police. The police come out and laugh and he like, man, look. He said, y'all trained him good, man. He said, this little man, this boy ain't talking. I said, he don't supposed to be talking. Fuck is she talking about? He like, no, I mean, he's not talking. P.
period. He said he won't even give me his name. He said, I can't release him if I don't know his name. I said, well, uh, let me go back there. I'll tell him he got to give you his name, but he's not going to fuck with you, dog. I'll, he said, I can't take you back there. I'm like, well, he, he burned up. You know, and the people be so rude, right? The lady down there. Don't try to sign nobody kids out this jail. I'm like, man, but I'm. Don't try to sign nobody kids out this jail. I'm like, but ma'am, can I? Don't try to sign no. She old big black bitch. I'm like, okay. So I take my stepson. I got one of the other little guys. I was trying to get their other little buddy. She went so hard on him, I couldn't. Y'all, we were staying, let's say, on 60-something in Damon at the time. The motherfucker uh, place was like on uh, 10th, 11th in motherfucking California, way down there. This is a long way. It's 2 o'clock in the morning. I ain't got no fucking license. And the car I was driving, which was one of my partner's cars, didn't have no turn signal on. I done made it all the way back home. Finally, this boy grandma called. And she said, well, Maurice was just up here. He left. She like, yeah, he can bring my son home. Let him come. Now, I'm pulling up in the drive front of the house, y'all. And she called. No, we was at the gas station a block from the house. She said, hello? Yeah, she like, Maurice? I'm like, yeah. She said, well, you can come get. I said, I bitch. Oh, my God, y'all. I snapped. Bitch. I know you lying. I was just down there. You act like I tried to steal that kid. I'm not coming back. No motherfucking way. You got to be out your goddamn mind, bitch. I'm two minutes away from the house. I'm not coming back down there. She like, well, if he won't come get him, he going to go to jail. Well, bitch, he going to jail today. And she, can I talk to Miss Houston? Yeah, you can talk to her. Click. I hand my girl the phone. She like, hello. She said, your man mean. She like, no, he not mean. But he right. We was just down there. And we a block away from the house. And that's a long way. I don't think he want to come back. She like, well, if y'all can, come back and you can get him. Now, lady, this is where you know your man. Just pay attention. It's best. Don't try to argue with motherfuckers when they, they mad. Let them cool off. This is how sharp my girl was. When I used to come in, I would park the car in the back in our driveway in the back. So when I came and just pulled up, I parked in the front. So she automatically knew he going back out. He, he let him cool off. So I went upstairs, cooled off, just relaxed for a few minutes. Had to calm myself down. You know, nobody said nothing. Everybody was quiet. The son was quiet. He like, damn, I hope he go get my boy, but at least I'm out. But maybe my stepdad will go back and get him. He parked the car in the front. Maybe he go. So after about two hours, I come back down. All right, come on, boy, let's go. You know, I had to drive all the way back down there to get little Mo and got him out of jail. You know, and brought him back home. Now, had my girl been an asshole and be like, you ain't gonna go get him? And trying to argue with me, I'd be like, bitch, no. You know what I mean? I ain't going. And she would fed into that shit. We'd have been arguing. I'd probably flip that motherfucker to the back and whoop, bagged it in there. Okay. If you want him out of jail, you go drive down that bitch because I ain't. I'm not finna do it. Ain't nobody gonna pressure me to do a goddamn thing. I'm gonna do what I wanna do. You know, I'm a nice guy, but ain't nobody gonna pressure me to do Shit, if I don't want to do it. You feel me? And it's just crazy, man, that uh, small shit can come up that can escalate things. Like back to this girl that I seen. She, 20 some years later, she ain't changed, y'all. She ain't changed, not one bit. She's still a bitch. And still go get somebody hurt. And she was mad at me because I didn't recognize her. I wasn't even fucking with you. I was fucking with your friend. I'm not into looking at my girlfriend's friends. You know, and like I said, I never liked it because I knew she was one of them bitches always turning up and starting shit. 
and shit how she kicked it off, you know. And then the women do shit, and the men have to fight the battle. And the but the brother say, man, we weren't even tripping on the fight, man. Thank you for stopping your guy for killing my man, cause he could he was would have been out of here, y'all. I'm talking about for real. He would have been out of here. Because Mo wasn't finna play with his ass. Mo sent him when he said, That bitch got a strap, G. And he jumped out and head to his head before the nigga could get it up. I'm like, no, Joe don't bust his ass. He ain't on shit. Let's go. Because I know he was an amateur. You know what I mean? Sometimes you got to just let shit. You know what I mean? Everybody want to be a killer these days. A killer these days. Once you kill somebody, they can't come back, y'all. They can't come back. And uh, you go see these people again. Like I just bumped into this hoe again. What if uh, she would have just put her people on me? Like, hey, that's the nigga boo. They just got out on me. I wouldn't even know. When she was being nice or trying to talk to me, I didn't recognize her. But once she started acting like herself, I'm like, yeah, you the bitch. I was talking shit at the party. I thought you didn't remember me. I didn't. Until you start talking shit. That's what I remember about your asshole. You feel me? Watch your mouth, bitch. For real, watch your mouth when you talking to the general, bitch. Because you'll get your ass whooped. Just like you got your people ass whooped. And somebody almost murked then. That same shit still going on. Same shit still going on. You better watch how you approach me. Cause you see me on YouTube and shit. I don't give a fuck. You can watch every episode. Subscribe to the channel. But you better keep your motherfucking mouth shut. Cause next time I see you bitch. I'm gonna make sure that's the last time I see your ass. Straight up.